Bonjour and welcome or welcome back to my channel, Claude here. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Urban Crow Oracle by MJ Cullinan. Now I've had this deck for quite a while, I'd say about uh, probably three months, um, but obviously I wanted to work with it as I always do and then there were other reviews to do, so anyway that's why it's coming now. But um, as always it's going to be time stamped, so if you don't want to hear about the guidebook, the box and so on, you can just go to whatever bit interests you. Uh, we'll also um, do a shuffle and a collective card pool to give you an idea of, you know, what it looks like when you do. And I will also pair it with the Crow Tarot, its big brother, which I have reviewed, but it was one of my first reviews about a year ago. So I'll leave you a card here and in the description box below if you want to check it out. But it's more of a... You know, it's not a thorough in-depth review, it's just of a flip through with a few um, comments. So, um, if you've got the time and you want to go through this whole review with me, brilliant. Um, just relax and let's do this. So, this is a Hay House production. It comes in a standard um, two-piece box with the slots on the side so you can push it up. So, this is what it looks like. And then at the back... It looks like this. Now it retails at $26.99 US dollars I'm talking about and the Canadian dollars is $35.99 but you can, you can get it for slightly less you know on Amazon. So I'm going to read this little bit for you. Like dark sentinels observing our world through intelligent black eyes, many see crows as forebonding omens. But crows bond, mourn, play and even remember faces, offering gifts to human they like and dive bombing humans who have wronged them. This 54-card oracle deck and guidebook connects you to the mystical messages and intuitive insights of these clever and captivating birds, from the sacred space of a nest to the gift of a shiny trinket. So when you open the box, you have the guidebook, and this is the inside of the top part of the box, which I'm going to put here, and then the bottom. So let's talk about the guidebook now. Let me just put the cards on this side so I can show you. So the same obviously cover. This is quite a thin guidebook. Um, normally Hay House's um, decks are kind of bigger. Um, and you have the same message here. This is the creator, MJ Kalinin. Now, as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't matter whether it's thin or thick because sometimes I find that the guidebooks are packed with information that I don't need. So for instance, you open this. You have your standard, you know, opening page with Hay House Publishing and the copyrights and all of that jazz. And then you've got your table of contents. You can see you have author's notes, getting to know your crows, which is just one page, and then the cards. And then a couple of pages about the author. You're not going to find any spreads in this um, guidebook. To me, it's not a problem because I, I very rarely use them, if I'm honest. And you can get your hands on really good spread books that could work for tarot and oracle and actually I, re um, I reviewed one uh, by Barbara Moore and I'll leave you a card here and in the description box below as well it's a very good book so if you lack inspiration or you want to try something new for spreads she even tells you how to um, create them so it'll be in there so here you have a little dedication which I'm going to read to you because I thought it was lovely Thank you to all who have bought and pre-ordered this deck. It is because of your support that I am able to focus on creating. Thank you as always to my beautiful daughter who keeps me grounded. And thank you to my beautiful, funny and at times obnoxious neighborhood crows who serve as inspiration. So she lives in Seattle and, you know, it's a very urban setting and there are many crows there. So that's where she kind of, you know drew the inspiration. But she also mentions on the author's notes that um, she has used uh, Marsluff's, I hope I've said it correctly, Marsluff's book, Gifts of the Crow, uh, for inspiration as well, um, particularly for the illustration. And here she explains to you how um, the crows have been some kind of inspiration for her. Now, getting to know your crows, these are little tips on what to do with the cards, how to familiarize yourself and bond with your deck. And then we go straight into the meanings of the cards. So each card is numbered, which I love because for quick references, you know, when you want to know the meaning of a card, it's brilliant. They have a keyword, which you find here, and then an explanation, which will vary according to the card. But she gives you a lot of nuggets about um, the animals, the crows, and, you know, what they are like as animals. 
and then obviously a little bit of an interpretation and how you could see it. And I will say this, I've noticed in her interpretations, what I really like is that she shows you both sides of the coin. Um, so for instance, you know, commitment could be coming from you or do you need to look at the commitment because you are afraid of committing or is it someone else who's afraid of committing? So she really, I'm not giving it justice, but you get what I'm trying to say. She She shows you you know, all of the sides of the coins, basically. So there's 54, there are 54 cards. And then at the end of this booklet, you've got about the author. Um, she's also done the Guardian of the Night um, Tower deck, which I have reviewed as well. It's a beautiful deck. And I'll leave you a card here and in the description box below if you want to check it out, because I actually think it would pair really nicely with this one as well. So I'm going to put the guide book here. I apologize for the fluffy sleeves. It's getting very cold where I live and um, <laughs> the cold gets into my bones when I sit to record. So that's why. So I'm sorry. It's not very glamorous. Okay. So let's have a look at the cards now. Enough of my rambling. So that's the back, which I think is very pretty. I really like that. It's an oracle deck. So obviously I've got average size hands. So you can see it's kind of wide. But then again, her tarot was also this kind of size. So I'm used to it. I would say it's a matte finish, matte semi-glossy. And it's a standard Hay House uh, cardstock. So you can see it bounces back. No problems. I think it shuffles really nicely. But again, it's a question of preferences, isn't it? You know, if you don't like Hay House's decks, then you're not going to like it, you know. So let's go through the cards together. So we have card number one, Abundance. Now this is where, you know, she shows you that um, you need to focus on what's out there and not on what you lack. These guys here, they're, they're on the, um, they know where the, the fish is basically. Uh, whereas this one has had to fly to get it. So, you know, there is be grateful for what you've got. That kind of idea with this card. Let me put it here. Then we have Anomaly. And obviously, you know, a white crow, well, that's kind of abnormal and kind of stands out. And telling you that something will stand out in the future. Then we have card number three, Anticipation. And with this card, she discusses about the fact that Anticipation gives you hope, keeps you moving, but by the same token, not to get too attached to the outcome. Because if you don't get what you want or the outcome is slightly different, you may be disappointed, which is a negative energy. That's what I mean when I say she touches on both sides of the coins, which I think is really good. Four is balance, and she talks about how crows and birds can stay on the wire like that, and even if the wind is strong, they don't fall. And I love the fact that the numbers of the cards is really well thought out. I mean, if you've been on my channel, you know I really like numerology. And four is to do with strong foundation, stability, and obviously balance. Um, so I, I, I'm really happy with that. I think that not only the keywords are powerful and to the point, but also um, the numerology actually matches nicely. And that's what I'll say about this deck. This is a deck that's kind of straightforward and I, I like that. Number five is battle. So again, five is disruption of the stability that you had in number four. And there could be many reasons why, you know, these are fighting. It could be a territory problem, whatever the case may be. But she also attracts your attention to the fact that you've got plenty of crews right there watching, not intervening and waiting to see who's going to win. So that may speak to you for, you know, a specific problem. Then we've got six, which is obviously harmony after the disruption and the term of the bond. Now she explains that the crows, aside from a few um, exceptions, bond for life, mate for life. And she explains that the bond doesn't have to be necessarily with a person. It could be a specific bond to a place um, or to your career. So, you know, it's very open. I really like that. Card seven is caching. And with this card, she talks about... Um, setting something aside and the reason why you feel you have to do this it's um to me it was a thought-provoking card when it came up in readings eight is a commitment and you know for better or for worse um crows she explains in the guidebook that um and it's been obviously observed in documentaries that crows stay together even if one of them is wounded and they they will look after each other very much like humans would so obviously the word commitment um, with that comes 
lots of different things. You know, there's lots of positive, but there's also lots of negatives, you know, for better, for worse, that kind of idea. I thought that was neatly done. Nine is communication. And with that, she talks about the confidence to speak up because obviously for a crow to come on a windowsill, it's a dangerous thing to do, but he's brave. So he's come here. Also like the fact that there's a knife right there, you know. <laughs> Card 10 is community, love that you can see the roots of the tree, you know, which obviously shows the strength that comes um, through um, community, just generally speaking. So this card questions your connection to a group. Um, maybe it doesn't, it no longer serves you, but it also talks about maybe needing to find your tribe. Then we have the card of curiosity, another card that talks about being daring a little bit. This card is a card that talks about embodying the researcher um, persona rather than um, feeling. It's really be brave and go and investigate. That's the essence of this card. Card 12 is about direction and it talks about how the crows, you know, focus. They always fly in a straight line. They are known for that. Um, so yeah, I, I thought that was spot on with that. Then we have displacement and it talks about how the cross can be destructive. So this card is, is a call for you to look at a situation and are you particularly lashing out at somebody or you're angry at something, um, but it is not the real source of the problem. I really find this oracle um, really straightforward when it talks and I love that. Then you've got 14, the card of distance and the necessity to distance yourself either physically or emotionally from a situation or a person. Then you have the card of distraction and you can clearly see here and crows apparently are known for doing things like that. They work um, collaboratively and here, you know, it's obviously getting the kibble from the dog and the dog's not seeing it. So again, in the guidebook, she talks about the fact that someone may be distracting you, you know, like pulling the wool over your eyes, or maybe you need a distraction um, from something. 16 is dominance, which obviously the card speaks for itself, and whether it is somebody else who's trying to dominate you or whether you can dominate somebody. 17 is exposed, and in this card, it talks about feeling vulnerable. Uh, you can clearly see why um, the crow would feel vulnerable with this huge bird coming at him. Um, so yeah, that, that's what the essence of the card is. 18 is fear and conquering it. That's what I like about this card, because this is the crow who is standing on a scarecrow and now can tap on the... Um, potential of a field that's, you know, got a lot of harvesting to do. Um, and if he'd not been brave, he would not have seen it and wouldn't have had this harvest. So I really like this spun on fear. Then we have the card of freedom. Um, I actually really like that artwork with the, the ray of lights everywhere. I think it, it's a fantastic card. Um, it's a card that talks to you about expanding your horizon. Um, and then after that, you have the card of ghosts, which is the opposite of expanding your horizon. It's when you're haunted by something. Um, stop reliving the past. Are you holding on to something that's stopping you from actually being free? 21 is gifts. And she explains, and I didn't know that, that crows actually sometimes come on her balcony and they, they drop objects like that. It's like a gift because apparently they remember who's nice to you and who isn't. Um, I mean, I knew that the Corvids are very intelligent creatures, but I, I didn't know that. So I thought that was really, really cute. And the idea of gifts is obviously to be grateful for them, but also to acknowledge them and, and make sure that you thank um, the universe, whoever you believe in. Then we have grief. Obviously, this is a heavy card. And she explains that the crows also grief, like, like we do. And this is a card that tells you that you need closure, and allowing the closure to happen, you know, feeling the grief. Then we have growth. And again, you see 23, 2 plus 3 is 5. This is the disruption from a stuck situation. So I really like, I really like that. And this card talks about 
um, there's a crucial point arriving in your life is going to present you with a new direction. And if you embark on that, you have, you know, endless possibilities. You can see it clearly with the um, the rays there and the, the sky is golden. I mean, it's, it's a really nice warm card. Then you have 24 Illusion. Now, I know my dogs, when they see their reflection on, on mirrors, they bark at it. They, they go nuts. <laughs> so obviously the card of illusion talks about um, something that may not be what it, what it actually is. Um, it also talks about denial. Are, are you in denial about something? Um, you know, are your expectations matching reality? That kind of um, idea. Then we have the card of influence. Now this is interesting because apparently crows have been known to smoke and drink, um, which I didn't know. Um, but this card raises the question of, you know, do you sway people easily? You know, do you have an influence? People, do they follow you? Or are you swayed easily? Do you follow people? Is there somebody who's trying to influence you, trying to make you do something you don't want to do, for instance? Then we have Insight, card 26. And this talks about how crows are very intelligent and they are problem solvers and they learn. And that's what the card is about. You know, with insight, you learn, you enrich your knowledge and you can grow. 27 is isolation. Now, this is, you can see by the color scheme, the, the golds have gone, the golden tones. It's, it's gray and, and gloomy. And this card talks about feeling cast like you've been cast aside or the fear of being um, ostracized. Um, or maybe even feeling like you're not gelling with the community you are or where you live. It's that kind of idea and it's asking you to look at that. Then we have 28, luck. And obviously, you know, imagine for a crow, if it were, if it were raining fish, I mean, it'd be pretty awesome for them. So um, this card talks about being at the right place at the right time because she talks about how she doesn't think that luck is really luck. Interesting take. I really like that. Card 29 is about memory. And um, she tells you that crows never forget. And there may be a need to forgive something or someone or yourself with this card. Card 30. I really like this card. It's mimicry. It really caught my attention because I've got a, uh, one of my dogs is a German Shepherd crossed with a Rottweiler and she does have the, that kind of look. And um, apparently, uh, crows can mimic sounds. And obviously here the, the idea is that the dog thought it was um, their, their owners that, that called for them. And obviously it isn't. So this card asks, you know, um, it, it's actually like a, Telling you, you know, there's someone or something that pretends to be something that they're not. And I don't have many oracle decks that have these kind of um, cards. So I find it very suited to modern life is what I want to say. Then you've got 31, Mischief. And obviously, you know, crows apparently love to pull on tails, whether it's for, from a cat or a dog. So this card can say that you need to inject a little bit of playfulness in your life, but also warns you about something that may be annoying you, someone who's displaying bad behavior. Then you have card 32, Nature. So see nature everywhere you are, particularly if you live in, in a town, a big city like, like Seattle, which is where she's, you know, that's the angle she's coming from, um, you know. And also maybe seek some time in nature because that may be required for you. Card 33 is Night. So this is a card that talks about the time that becomes all quiet, which is a perfect time for contemplation. But it's also a card that may be talking about your sleeping habits and the need to address them. Then you have card 34, Observation. And you can clearly see the crow is observing the spider. It's not attacking it. It's just observing. Um, and this is a card that um, suggests that you should be analyzing things before acting, you know, and maybe listening instead of talking. Card 35 is the card of perspective. Now, I didn't know that crows, and she does tell you that, um, actually hang upside down as well. They do that. So there's a lot of a hangman energy in this card. Um, so she talks about slowing down to consider something before taking action and looking at things from a different perspective, maybe thinking out of the box, maybe putting yourself into someone else's shoes as well. Card 36 is play. So taking time out, necessity to take time out if you're working too hard or you don't have time for yourself because it's going to boost your creativity. 
37 is preparation. Now, this is a very, very nice card. Um, this is the fairy, apparently, that you have in Seattle. And she was, she's explaining in the guidebook that the crows have learnt uh, on which side the fairies arrive and leave because the cars drive on the road and break open the shells um, and then they can, they can harvest, you know, the food. So they're very clever and they get ready for it so that they can have a good harvest. So this card is really about planning for something you know is going to happen and making sure you're ready so you can maximize the positive outcome. 38 is protection and she stresses that crows are very protective um, of their young. And obviously this card talks about, um, it's a beautiful positive card that talks about you can move on, you are protected, you're going in the right direction, you know, do not have any doubts. 39 is release. So, you know, once you have gone through the stage of grief, grief this is the uh, next step. Basically, we saw grief, you know, at the beginning of the deck. And this is about acceptance, because when you accept something, you turn the page and you can move on. It's a very powerful card. Then you have card 40, resistance. Now, obviously, you can see the crow is struggling with the winds. And this is just being adaptable and like a crow, finding the path of least resistance in order to get to where you're trying to um, get to. 41 is the card of risk. And here you can see the crow trying to pick at the shells, but knowing that the wave can actually swallow it. And this card talks about opportunity that others might have forgone because they're afraid or they've not seen it. And so this is about evaluating the risk. Is it worth it? And then taking it or not taking it. But this card does talk about probably taking it. But again, you know, you interpret the card as you want. 42 is routine. So she discusses how crows are um, actually routine creatures. And this talks about looking at your routines because obviously routines create stability, but at the same time, they can also bring stagnation and stop you from moving forward. So again, it's the two sides of the coins. You can see it with the coloring, the gold, which is positive with the sun, and then the gray, which is more of a slower energy, darker. Then we have 43, sacred space. So this card refers to your sanctuary, your nest, in effect, just like that. And this is a card that says to connect with your sanctuary, whatever this is, whether it's an actual place, whether it's in your heart. But this is what this talks about and the necessity to nurture it. Card 44 talks about scavenging. Now, I really liked what she put um, as a meaning for this card because it's asking, are you settling for less? Because when we're in between jobs, for instance, we're going to jump on whatever job we can get as an opportunity because we need to pay the bills. Now, it's okay for a quick fix, but uh, long term, it's not the best um, strategy. And so she's asking, um, you know, is that what you're doing currently? And is that okay to do so now? Is it time to move on to something better? You know, are you settling for less? 45 is self-interest. Now she talks about, um, she recognizes the crows that come on the balcony because she feeds them. She says there's one that's always pushing the others to get the food, whereas the others are kind of polite and take their turns. Here you can see the crow is taking the food um, just for himself. And so again, she talks about weighing the impact of self-interest. Sometimes it's necessary. Um, for instance, if you are um, offered a job in a different country, um, this is going to have an impact on your family, but is it going to be good long term? If it is, then self-interest and taking saying yes to the job you want, that is a good thing to do. But otherwise, is it going to break up the family? Then in that case, it isn't. It's thought-provoking. I like that. 46, so um, probably the most positive card in the deck. This is really the card that says there are no obstacles. Quick progress is coming your way. Just go for it. So this one and protection, I feel, are the two best ones, you know, on a positive level. 47 is survival. And you can see that the crow is stuck here and the fox is waiting patiently to eat its dinner. And so this card talks about limited possibilities and not to rely on quick fixes because you may regret it later on. You know, when we're in survival mode, um, well, it's not living, it's just surviving, that kind of thing. 
48 is teamwork and obviously the benefits of it. Now, I have seen crows ganging up on a, on a bigger bird uh, because they're very territorial and they were not happy the bird was there. It's terrifying. So this talks about, um, you know, the strength of working in a team, basically. Card 49 talks about territory. Um, and obviously, as I just said, they're very territorial. So this talks about boundaries. It talks about um, maybe needing to have some time alone or putting some boundaries, whether they're physical or emotional or mental. Card 50 is the card of a trickery. So obviously, deception is the first thing that um, comes to, comes to mind. Apparently, crows um, can steal from each other and then they put leaves on what they've stolen so that the other can't see. I mean, they're so clever. Um, but trickery can also be interpreted as a creative thinking. You know, do you need to do something uh, to think out of the box in order to get out of a um, sticky situation? Again, both sides of the coins. It's not necessarily all bad. 51 is upheaval. You can clearly see from the card, you know, what's what's happening. Um, this is talking about an upcoming change. And can you feel it? Um, and to trust your intuition. Because, you know, they could feel it was coming. It's that kind of idea. Card 52 is the card of warning. Crows are well known for having someone on the lookout and warning the others. You know, that's how they stay safe and protected. And so this is a card that talks about red flags. Um, you know, see them, look around. This is a warning card and it gives you time then to react so that you're not taken unaware. Then card 53 is waterproof. So apparently they have like a greasy coating on their feathers, which enables the water to just, you know, uh, basically go not stick to them. I mean, I knew duck had that. I didn't know crows did. Um, and so this is talking about having this on an emotional level so that the drama of other people doesn't swallow you up. And finally, card 54 is rough and you can see the red color and... Uh, you know, obviously the um, manic aspect of this card. And this is talking about um, wrath is literally anger mixed with the need for revenge. And so this is talking about if you're feeling angry about something, are you using this anger to create a positive outcome or a negative outcome? Which I think is a very nice thing to think about. So that was for the cards. I'm now going to shuffle them. Now, I don't rifle shuffle. Just um, I, I actually think it damages the cards, so I don't do that. Plus, for me, shuffling cards is like a ritual. That's when I connect with my deck. So if you want to take a couple of deep breaths and connect with me, let's see what we get. So our card is card number eight, Commitment. Now I'm going to read you from the guidebook so you get an idea of what you get for the meaning of each card. So nature photographer June Hunter has documented the lives of a pair of crows she calls George and Mabel and their commitment to one another. When George's beak broke due to an accident, his loving and faithful partner Mabel took over to ensure that George was fed and protected. When they coupled up, they agreed for better or worse in sickness and in health. This loving pair remains committed. The commitment card asks that you examine areas where you have entered into an obligation. Are you ready to put in the work if needed? Are you willing to sacrifice something to ensure that you stay true to your word? If it is a goal you are committed to seeing through to completion, are you willing to offer your time and resources? Think about the commitments you have made. Do they raise your vibration just thinking about them? Or do you feel a heaviness associated with the situation? Of course, we all have our moments of feeling less than enthusiastic. The question you may need to consider is if those moments of angst and resentment outweigh the love and support your commitment brings to your situation. So, you see, I, I really like what she's written. Um, and I, I don't know, it just I just think it's such a good oracle for everyday life. Now, let me just show you quickly her crow tarot. And this is the back of the card. And as you can tell, they're pretty much the same size. What I wanted to show you is how nicely they pair. So you see you've got the Ace of Cups here. And then you've got the Eight of Cups. Now this is a really 
coincidences? I think not. But someone needed to hear this because this card was asking about weighing up whether the commitment you have brings you resentment or angst or whether it's worth it. You have the Ace of Cups, which obviously could be a brand new beginning, a brand new love. And then the Eight of Cups, which is ass ass assessing the situation and realizing that this does not emotionally fulfill you anymore and you're going to turn your back and move away. So, you, I mean, you can see how they really marry really nicely. So, yeah, um, as you can tell from the whole review, I am very much enamored with this deck. I love how real this deck is. This is its strength. Um, I really think that it's for everyday readings. It's it's beautiful. Um, I like the this type of artwork anyway, but as far as I'm concerned, it's not a fluffy deck. I, I must say I'm not very keen on fluffy decks, generally speaking. And I, I, I've used it a lot. And when I want a quick response as well, it's, it's kind of really good. And it's blunt and to the point and it forces you to um, look at an issue, um, but not in a fluffy way, you know. That, that's what I mean. It's not brutal, though, you know, don't get me wrong. But I love it. So let me know what you think. Do you have it? Are you planning on buying it? Just, you know, chat with me down below. I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this beautiful deck. And wherever you are and whenever you're watching this, I wish you a beautiful and magical day. Thank you for stopping by. I'll see you again very soon. Until next time, au revoir.